Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Hey, can we make demand for our daily bread? As you do this, expect a miracle. Why? Because God is good. He's doing good things. Praise God. Join me in faith and say right now, Father, I demand for my daily bread. It's coming to me right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I just bless you, Lord, for revealing your truth to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, we've been talking about the wisdom of God's word. So, I was, I was showing you something from the book of Ezekiel yesterday. That's how judgment works. And, and understanding God... Now, everything I'm sharing with you, because we're talking about the wisdom of God. So we're talking about you understanding the personality of God. You understanding the way God operates. Okay, so he, he, he said, because he's a God that loves to exercise loving kindness, right, judgment, and righteousness. So at the end of the day, even after God finished judging, he will stand to be righteous. So if you, see that's the problem now, if you are warned that somebody would die and you don't reach out to the person. Now there are cases, yeah, of course there are cases where um, it, it happens, you know, you're praying for, you're just on your own and then the Lord says, so so and so person is going to die soon. Now, it's not all, all cases that God is sending a message to the wicked person, okay? You understand what I'm talking about? Now, the person can be a righteous person also. And you just get this information that so-so and so is going to live very soon. If you have access to the person, now, because the truth is, before God speaks that way, there are certain things, and, and, and I could mean this. <laughs> mm. Sometimes you feel that restriction in your in your heart. So, if if you are dealing now, now God actually says the wicked. To Ezekiel, the wicked. So don't ever put yourself in that place where. Let me show you something Jesus said. Look. Luke chapter 6. Alamako Telitra di Kabaya. You need to see this. Verse Luke chapter 6, verse 35. Mm. But love your enemies. Jesus is speaking here. It says, love your enemies. Do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return, and your reward will be great. Jesus says, love your enemies. Now, why is Jesus commanding you to love your enemies? Because you have a nature of love and you must not allow that nature to be stained. Not by the wickedness of any enemy. In every situation where you are tempted, it is your nature that is being called forth. So you are tempted and you see that you fell for that temptation. You know you've got work to do. Even if you've fallen ten times, it just shows that you've not done that work yet. It doesn't mean you are doomed for life. It's telling you that you are, you need to work on yourself. So now, because we carry the nature of love, Jesus is saying to us, love your enemies. And he didn't just say love your enemies. He said, do good and lend. Lend. Don't expect anything. Your enemy, your enemy needs money. Oh, you, you, you by chance heard that somebody that is wicked to you is looking for where to lend money. Jesus said, lend to him. 
And when he says lend to him, say, oh, I'm going to pay you back by month end. Or I'm going to pay. I say, nah, I expect nothing back from me. Ah, pastor, well, you don't understand. How can I? Jesus gave that. Call. Now you see, now from here, you begin to reason. Why? Say, instead of saying, ah, me, I can't do that too. Ah, hey, me. My, somebody I know is my enemy and I'll lend him money. I, I'll put interest on it. If I have to, I'll put 50% interest on it so that he will read it to pain him. Wh whose nature are you portraying there? Now look at what Jesus said. I'll read that again. Verse 35. But love your enemies, do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return. And your reward will be great and you will be sons of the most high for he is kind to the unthankful and evil see that now that's a character he wants you to show because people look at you and say you're truly a child of god yes that's the testimony he's talking about because everybody expected it to act this way. I'm like, nah, I'm not a normal human being. How about if you help your enemy, he will now use it to fight you more. Hey, can he destroy you? Now, I'm not saying be foolish and throw yourself in the hands. You've got to be wise. You've got to be wise, though harmless. You've got to be wise. Because if you're not wise, you'll die like Abel. If you're not wise, you'll die like Naboth. See? These are people who felt they were upright. But they died. They died because they did not display wisdom in their actions towards their enemies. Love your enemies, but don't get yourself killed. So Jesus said, learn. And don't, when you learn to them, don't expect. More like give to them. If you find your enemy is hungry, feed him. If you find your enemy needs clothes, give them clothes. Are you giving it so that they will like you? No. You are displaying a character of yourself. This is who I am. I cannot not love. Because the nature of love is bubbling inside me. The love of God is shed abroad in my heart even by the Holy Spirit. So as I look and I'm thinking, what evil can I do to this person? And I'm just thinking, how can I hit this person hard? And I found out that he doesn't have food at home. Ah. Instead of thinking, eh, good, let him die of starvation. He said, ah, I think I know the evil I'm going to do for him. Go buy the food, get it, and come and give it to him. Guess what he, you know, you know when they come in, that's Paul that said it. He said, you're heaping coals of fire on his head. Now, how does that work? By the time you give him, he has two ways to respond to that. Be thankful with a grateful heart to you and repent. Or use your gift to mock you and face the judgment of it. You understand what I'm saying? Now, when, when they use your gift to mock you, maybe you, you, you give them, say, he thinks by this, because he has done this for me, because I'm in need. He thinks it will make me stop fighting him. Ah, he has not seen anything. He thinks he can bribe me. Now, if that's the way your enemy is thinking, woohoo! Then the judgment of God is so near on them. And when the judgment comes, you will be excluded in that judgment. You know why? Because you, you manifested love in that whole relationship. And that's what God expects of us. Why? Because in, in exercising righteous, in exercising judgment, in exercising loving kindness, righteousness must be done. And righteousness is simply the way of God being right. Simple. So also walking in the righteousness of God, he said walking in the same paths that God walks in. So you always are conscious to know what would God do in this situation. And that's exactly what I want to do. So God loves it. He loves to exercise 
a balance at the end of the day whether judgment or loving kindness or both in the same situation the right thing will be done that's how god thinks As the thinking of God. So you cannot hate on people. You can't. You can't hate on. If you've been doing that, it's time to repent. No matter. Oh, Pastor, to what you don't understand what this person did to me. Yes, prove you've got strength in God by forgiving. That's the wisdom of God's word. There is no way God's going to side you to think and plot evil against the person no way not not a way there is no way he's going to do that so if you laugh and you're happy yes god is dealing with you god is dealing. when god is done he will turn at you and he's not going to look at you with a smile is that the kind of person you're made of so you remember elijah called down fire i want you to understand something Because sometimes we, 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 we misjudge things. Please pay attention to what I'm about to say. Elijah was on a mountain. And the king sent people to go arrest him. And he came to Elijah. And he says, are you Elijah? Come down. And Elijah said, if I be a man of God... Let fire come down and consume you. And the Bible said, and fire came down and consumed them. The next batch came, the same thing. Then one came. I said, oh man of God, please have mercy on me and spare my life. Please, I'm not here by myself. The king sent me. If you just give us the honor of please stepping down and following us, then Elijah mellowed. People are dead. Question. Now, now, later on, we see Jesus and his disciples. They were to go to the city of Nazareth. No, no, the city of Samaria where. And the disciples went ahead and got feelers that they are not expecting Jesus because Jesus was just going to pass through. He's not going to stay with them. So we should not come. And when they heard that, you know, the sons of thunder, James and John, they're like, what nonsense. Who, who do these people think they are? Master, let's just call them fire and consume them like Elijah did. Now, the problem here is this. You know, oh, it's not God that sent down that fire. You see, the problem so who sent the fire? Who sent that? So who's trying to prove that Elijah was a man of God? Satan. Oh no, no, no. It's, it's, it's Elijah's angel that released the fire. The man simply said, if I be a man of God, let fire come down and consume me. In this instance, what nonsense is this? Well, let's call them fire and clear these people out. The situation was not the same. And Jesus rebuked them. He didn't rebuke them for saying Elijah called them fire. No. He rebuked them for the state of their own heart. Elijah. Elijah. <laughs> Elijah called on fire to protect himself. Elijah wasn't thinking evil about the king or evil about the soldiers. He's just like, you guys just came here without respect. Is that how you deal with a man of God? He was correcting them. Even though by death, praise God. Yeah, he was correcting them. And Jesus was not rebuking the disciples for what Elijah did. No, he was rebuking them for the state of their heart. That's why he said to them, you don't know what manner of spirit that you are. He wasn't saying Elijah was not of a good spirit. No. 
you know, see, if you don't grow in understanding, he will just look at that and say, ah, that's proof that it's not God that sent down that fire. No, Jesus wasn't talking to the fire about the fire that Elijah called. He was talking to his disciples. He said, stop that. You don't know what manner of spirits that you are made of. He was dealing with their heart. He was dealing with their reasoning because they were not giving passageway. Let's destroy everybody. Something is wrong with your heart. I pray the Lord give you understanding. And you know, that's how we mix up things. You know, that's why I'm teaching, taking time to teach you the wisdom of God's word. We mix up things because someone made a statement here and said, oh, that means, no, look at it further. Look at it further. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. There are lots of things that we hold on to that, that, that we shouldn't be holding on to. Because we lack understanding. Because people told us the way they, they see it. And we ran with it because it was itching in our ears. Or rather we had itching ears. It's not God that sent down the fire because God does not kill. Okay. Hmm. Yes, God does not kill. Okay. Be careful how you say that. Oh, but that's why I say, does God kill? Does God watch people die? Did he have the power to stop it? Many instances. So, if God told Abraham, I'm going down to Sodom and Gomorrah, I've heard all the evil that they are doing, I'm going there and I'm going to destroy the city. He says, I'm going to destroy the city. So, who destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah? God, of course. There is no, 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 it's not God because God does not kill. You're creating, you're creating a scenario in your mind that does not exist. You are. He's a loving God. Yes. But sometimes, even in love, He kills. Oh, Isaiah told us that He was the one that bruised His Son, Jesus. He was the one that made His soul an offering for sin. So, who killed Jesus? God. No, in that case, see, the moment you start coming with in that case, it is, you're already wrong. You're wrong. God kills. Yet he's loving. He's a God of judgment. He loves to show loving kindness. And everything he does culminates in one thing, the display of righteousness. He stands to be right in all things. But see, when you're dealing with God, the problem is your own heart, the state of your heart. That's what he's concerned about. The state of your heart. Make sure it's clean. Make sure your heart is clean. Have mercy. Show empathy. It doesn't matter what you know. It doesn't matter what you feel. Allow God to handle the rest. He's big enough to handle your life. He's big enough. So oh, somebody's blocking my promotion. That person, except he dies, I don't think I'll have the... Or somebody told me over his dead body for me to be promoted. And you don't have to go and say, then you will die. No. Say, Father, hear the words of this man. And please, all I need is my promotion. Allow God to take, and if the person eventually that don't say, he said it though, he said, no. Show empathy. I wish he didn't have to die. Because we could have all grown together. The world is big enough to contain every one of us. So I don't need to put one down. Or I don't need to wish that one goes down for me to be elevated. No, sir. The, a space can be created for me to bypass that person. 
and achieve what I want to achieve. God is bigger than that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, I bless you. There are, there are certain people watching me right now. And you are in such situations where you need the judgment of God. My prayer is for you that your heart become right. Because I sense in my spirit that's the you've, you've, you've been in this situation for so long, struggling, and, and someone is oppressing you. And even while you were listening to me, you felt it in your heart that, oh, this pastor is talking to me. I'll tell you something. That person is not the one blocking you. You fell into a trap and your heart have not been right with God. You've not been thinking and exercising your, the proper thoughts. And I'm hearing the Lord say, if you repent today and turn to Him, He's going to create room for you. Within the next 14 days, there's going to be an opening that will come for you. And God is going to bypass that person. That's what I hear the Lord say. And you shall be lifted. But he wants you to repent of all those evil thoughts you've been carrying in your heart. May the Lord show you mercy in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.